Welcome to Retro Rivals, a new Yu-Gi-Oh! series where we duel with the recently re-released Yu-Gi-Oh! Retro Pack. It's full of all the best cards from Yu-Gi-Oh!'s Golden Age, complete with the iconic anime monsters and powerful staples of all different rarities. Every week, we'll each open a new Retro Pack mini box that's four packs and use the cards inside to craft our own decks. That also means our decks will get stronger every week, from awkward strategies to custom-built powerhouses. The first duel to take five rounds is the winner. Welcome to episode seven. Once again, we have our brand new retro packs. Woo! They're here. And Paul and I are gonna be looking to break our tie. We are three and three. And it's only because I used tunes that one episode. It's a big mistake. <laughs> We're three and three. This is a first to five, guys. We are close to the finish line. Whoever wins this episode could very well win the entire series. That's true. Also, what did you guys think of Alex Joey last episode? Do we do? We do, do we, no, no. Do we need no, another Joey we, card? We don't need any more Joey. No more Joey. Joey won last episode. Like, if you Joey think about did that win last episode, but I want a different cards now. Oh, well. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna open this stuff. And if you guys like the segment, which we know you do, thanks for all the support, then drop a like. Let's get to the opening. All right, guys, time to pop this bad boy open. Four packs, let's go. You know what, I wouldn't mind seeing a third one. Oh, MST, solid spell and trap removal. Last episode, tra uh, traps were huge. So I fully expect that MST to, to be a great card. Mystic Tomato, great for getting darks. Shiozan Ryu, Toon Summon Skull. La Jin, the mystical genie of the lamp. This is my second copy. 1800 attack, ooh, boy, Paul better watch out. I have two 1800 attack monsters now. Mask of Darkness, Polymerization, and Baby Dragon. Oh, and Mahabila. All right, strong start. We got a super on our first pack. I am not mad at that, but I want higher rarity. We have Gaia Power, Umiruka, Shining Angel, you know, one of my best cards. Rising Air Current, and Left Leg of the Forbidden One. <laughs> Twin Head Thunder Dragon, probably one of the, the, is definitely the best extra deck monster in this format, or fusion deck monsters. Gravekeeper Servant, Harpy Lady, Hane Hane. All right, next pack. We have UFO Turtle, but no good fires to search. Upstart Goblin, Mystical Space Typhoon. Got more than enough of these now. Send you the thousand hands. I got three of these uh, last episode, so this is now just extra. Oh, Solemn Judgment. Now I have two Solemns. Ooh boy, this is about to be a disgusting game. <laughs> Mahavilo, Giant Soldier of Stone, Trap Hole, and Magic Jammer. Two very good traps. You know what, I don't even care if I don't get a secret because getting Solemn and La Jin, that's good. Those are really good supers. Shining Angel, Giant True Nade, Umiruka, Mystical Space Typhoon, and the Dark Magician. Though, I actually already have a Dark Magician, so this is redundant, but it's cool, it's cool to have. Thousand Dragon, Black Pendant, Gazelle, Mask of Darkness. So yeah, these are my pulls, and uh, at least two of them are gonna look really good in my deck this episode. All right, my turn to open up my retro packs. This has been such a fun set to open, and the reason is actually the foil pull rates are really good in this set. Like, we're getting four packs and the fact that we pretty consistently seem to get like at least two and usually three foils is awesome so like this isn't sponsored or anything but this is actually like a worthwhile set to buy four packs luminous spark shame that my deck never really went in like a light direction so i wasn't able to make much use of this field spell or really any of the field spells they didn't even include Mystic Plasma Zone in the set. It's kind of bizarre. Sonic Bird, another Toon Summon Skull, a Black Illusion Ritual. Oh, a secret rare I did not expect to see. Blast Sphere, that's huge, that's huge. If your opponent's monster attacks the space down defense position card, it becomes equipped to that attacking monster without applying damage calculation. Destroy the equipped monster and this card during the standby phase of your opponent's next turn, and then inflict damage to your opponent equal to the equipped monster's attack? This could be a really big deal. Like this is like a huge comeback card. And it's a secret rare, although you can kind of barely tell. You don't actually use all that much secret foiling on it. And it is a, well, it's a Mystic Tomato target, although like you wouldn't really want to summon it with Mystic Tomato, but you could search it with Sangin. So it's still pretty nice. Gazelle, the King of Mythical Beasts. Another Jirai Gumo, a man -eater bug, and an armed ninja. My God, secret rare blast sphere. Sheesh. Retro Pack is on doing me nice right now. Mystical Space Typhoon, Mystic Tomato, Yozan Ryu, Toon Summon Skull, a super rare, although a bit of a more awkward one, Catapult Turtle. So you contribute a monster to inflict damage equal to half its attack to your opponent. This is like surprisingly okay. I didn't know if any of either of us would pull it because they put Cannon Soldier in the set too. 
do. This one's a little harder to use though, because it's level five. So I guess ideally you'd maybe summon it with like a mother grizzly and then it just has to survive because it's only got a thousand attack. But then if it does survive, you contribute all your monsters in itself and probably deal a lot of damage. So like there's definitely something there. I'll consider it for sure. And the gazelle, another black pendant. I actually haven't gotten that many equip spells. So this is good. If I want to like lean in more to my Maha Vila strategy, I need more equip spells to do it. And surprisingly, I haven't gotten many. You know, another card I haven't gotten is um freaking what is it? N Nimble Mamonga. I still only have two Nimble Mamongas this late into this series, and it's crazy to me. Because I wanted to have them to like gain life points, because I know I'm gonna be paying a lot because I've got like solemn judgments and all that stuff. So Gaia Power, Umaruka, Shining Angel, Rising Air Current, right leg of the Forbidden One. Can somebody just go through and watch all the episodes so far and let us know if we have all the Exodia pieces like besides the head? Because I feel like we have everything besides the head at this point. We put a lot of arms and not that many legs, but it's a right leg, a black pendant, elegant egotist, thousand dragon, and gazelle, the king of mythical beasts. I think if Alec summons a thousand dragon in this series, he should just eternally become Joey Wheeler for the rest of his life. He just has to cosplay as Joey, hair and all. Final pack. I'll take anything. I think I've gotten pretty solid pulls so far. UFO turtle, upstart goblin, mystical space typhoon, Senju, Karibo. Hmm. I think I remember using this in like the very first episode and maybe it worked, uh, but this isn't, it's not amazing. It's, it's a cool rare though. Karibo looks nice. They've changed how Karibo looks in more recent renditions. They made it a lot cuter, but the original Karibo is like Loki, kind of creepy. Another black pendant, a mask of darkness, an armed ninja, and the flame swordsman. The fusion you cannot actually summon with cards from this set. But all in all, not too shabby. I didn't get as many foils as we maybe usually do, but I do think I got a pretty worthwhile one in Blast Sphere. So we're definitely gonna be putting that to test and we'll think about the catapult turtle too. So actually, I keep saying that I only have one solemn judgment, but I actually already had two. So now I've got three. Good luck, Paul. <laughs> Yeah, I noticed in our last few games that because of like the solemns and stuff, our life points have been decreasing at a fairly like rapid clip in these games. And that actually is a bigger problem than it seems because, you know, yeah, you use solemn twice and now you have an advantageous position, but you can't be as aggressive as you want to be, even if you have something like, you know, lodge in on the board. Because, you know, when this gets swung over, you could lose. If you've paid half twice, you're sitting at 2,000 life points. You gotta be careful with that because sometimes monsters come out of nowhere to deal damage. Sometimes they just get huge out of nowhere. It's a uh, it's a more nuanced problem than it would seem. So me having these three Sodoms, it might be a more of a curse than I think. So things have changed a little bit because now that we have access to so many like negation traps, life points are definitely getting a little scarier or like they're, they're more of an important asset. And I'm changing my deck in a very particular way that I will, well, you'll hopefully see in the video with that in mind in the hopes that I can like maybe capitalize, not capitalize, but like mitigate the risks of such things. That's all I'll say for now. So this series, I've been pretty adamant about keeping my deck at 40 cards because I wanted like to maximize the chances of seeing my certain plays and certain engines in our games. But I'm actually sleeping up a 41st card. <gasps> Yes, I'm adding an extra card to my deck and it's actually going to make my deck more consistent than when it was at 40 cards. I know it's hard to believe, but I made some different deck choices and I'm going to see my plays more often by doing this. It's hard to, I know it's hard to believe. Modern Yu-Gi-Oh players are so confused. They said, that's not 60 cards. Why would you want to be at 41 or 42? There's a method to the madness. That's all I'm gonna say. All right, Arrival, it's duel number seven, which is like crazy to think about. That's right. This this is essentially game point for someone. Whoever wins is yeah, one game true. away from winning the series. The tiebreaker, oh my God. Five and a one. six, okay. I got Ooh, a nine. nine. Okay, your pick, duelist. I'll go first. Okay. There's no reason not to. Okay. Or is there? And draw for turn. All right, I have cards in my hand. Set one face down and I'll pass there. I'm a duelist who draws. Let's also set a card face down. Maybe even another. Your move, duelist. Draw for turn. What the modern Yu-Gi-Oh players know about starting off a duel like that. This might as well, this is like the equivalent of just like, I place a land and pass. Yes. <laughs> like actually. Oh, is he setting more? I could set more. You could. So I will. Okay. I'll set a monster and pass. I'm a draw. I'm gonna set another card face down and pass. Draw for turn. 
Normal summon La Jin. I'll activate my cloning. I'm going to clone your La Jin, the mystical genie of the lamp, and get my own monster with 1800 attack points, 1000 defense points, and also the same type, attribute, and level. So cloning is a monster? It's a token. It's like a token, It's yeah. a token, and the trap state is in the grave, technically. Yeah, the trap's in the grave. I can actually get okay. a token if you No, prefer. I just wanted to make sure I understood. Yeah, the it, trap is in like the grave. It's like and I had yeah, to be sure I yeah. knew what I was dealing this with. This is a token, everybody. The trap is in the grave. We're just, it's just a visual. Let's flip summon Penguin Soldier. I'm going to target your face down and your monster, your token, and send them to your hand. Penguin Soldier attacks for 750, and Lajin attacks for 1800. Ooh. I'll pass there. I'll draw. In that case, I'm gonna normal summon my Maha Velo, and I'll equip it with the Axe of Despair. We'll attack Lajin. Goodbye, Lajin. We're gonna set one card face down and end our turn. Draw for turn. Activate Giant True Nade. Ooh. Rude duelist. My spells and traps are gonna go right back to my hand. 1550 is a lot of attack, but not to my copycat. Oh, okay. But I still wanna do some damage. So we're gonna flip summon the giant germ. Copycat's gonna swing into your Mahavila. We have the same attack. We are destroyed. And now Penguin Soldier attacks for 750 again. Giant germ gets for a thousand. I'll pass there. I'll draw for turn. Normal summon the Mystic Tomato. And. I'll attack the giant germ. I'll take 400. And I'll take 500. But I will use the effect of my germ. I'm going to summon two giant germs from my deck. All right, we're setting two cards phase down. Passing back to you, Duelist. Draw. Will my card actually stay set this time? Find out next time on Dragon Ball Z. So many things have gotten bounced, it's just hard to know. Normal summon Shining Angel. I will. Activate my Solemn Judgment. Ooh! I'll pay half my life points to negate the summon of Shining Angel. Goodbye, Shining Angel. That, that's fair. That is a, it's a fair play. So with that in mind, I'm going to switch my monsters to defense position. A smart and understandable strategy. I'll pass there. Draw. Go on the offensive with Amazonist Chainmaster. I'm gonna attack the giant germ and the other giant germ. We're gonna set another card face down and end my turn. I'll activate Swords of Revealing Light. Ooh, okay. No attacking for three turns. You leave me alone. And I'll use my Thunder Dragon. Let's dig out some Thunder Dragons. I'll set a monster face down and I'll end my turn. I draw. Well, since my monsters can't attack anyway, we're just going to switch them to defense mode. I'll end my turn. Draw! One turn on swords. Normal summon my copycat, and I use the effect to copy your Amazon's chain master. Flip my shining angel. Copycat, attack the Mr. Tomato. Mr. Tomato is going to be destroyed. I'll use its effect, of course. Special summoning my Sangin. Shining Angel will attack. What's the. How much do you have to pay for a Chain Master? 1500, so I can't attack use it. Attack Chain Master. <laughs> yeah, Chain Master's destroyed. I can't use it. I can't cheat like I have in some earlier episodes, apparently. <laughs> and then I'll pass. Draw for turn. I will switch my Sangin to defense mode. Normal summon Maha Velo in attack mode. I'm gonna go ahead and equip Mahavela with Black Pendant. Then I'll activate Acts of Despair on Mahavela as well. <laughs> so now it's gaining 1,500 from the equip spells and 1,000 more from its effect. So 4,050 attack points. So that's a difference-making monster. I'm gonna end my turn because I can't attack. Draw for turn. Let's switch the Shining Angel and the Copycat to defense. Oh, you scared. You can attack my Sangin if you want. Normal Summon Sonic Bird. I'll activate its effect to get a ritual spell. It's Black Illusion. I'll set one face down and I'll pass. Draw for turn. Normal summon Jirai Gumo. I'm gonna set a card face down and end my turn, which is my last turn of Swords of Revealing Light. Goodbye, Sword. You bought me time. Draw! I'm gonna tribute both my monsters for the Red Eyes Black Dragon. I'll use my trap hole. Yep, yeah, I'll set a card face down, pass. I draw. All right, duelist. Now that I'm free to attack you as much as I want, let's see what all I can do. Maha Vilo, attack the copycat. All right, let's see here. So you've used both your copycat, which means Shining Angel shouldn't have anything too deadly as a target if I did want to destroy it. However, I won't for now. I'm going to pass my turn. Ooh, you playing it so safe. Back to you. Draw for turn. Set a card face down and pass. I draw. Mahavilo, attack Shining Angel. Shining Angel is destroyed, and I'll use this effect. Make it a Shining Angel. 
in oh, attack in mode. In attack position. I'll set a card face down and end my turn. Woo! I was wondering slow. if you were maybe gonna get time wizard, and if you did, then I could have attacked that. But mm -hmm. since you didn't, Draw. your move. Shining Angel attacks Sangin. Sangin's destroyed. I'll activate its effect. It's gonna grab me a card to my hand with 1500 or less attack points. Let's get my man eater bug. Ooh. That's a fun monster. I'm gonna main phase two and activate Fisher. Oh, destroy my monster with the lowest attack point. Huh? That's right. I'll pass. Draw. Return. Hmm, interesting draw. All right. Enter battle. Mahavilo is gonna attack the Shining Angel. I take that. Woo! That was a lot of life points in one go. Using its effect? Yes. I was, say, I was hoping you'd say no. No, no. Maybe no. your there, cards in this in deck, the hand. there is always a light target. Is it always the light target I want? Eh. But I will be getting the Time Wizard. All right, dudes. So we're gonna risk it all on the Time Wizard. It's worth a shot. Set one card face down and end my turn. Draw. Activate the effect of my Time Wizard. I'll call Tails. Heads, ah. yes! <laughs> Time, time was destroyed, destroyed. and you'll take 250. I, I really I had to just that get that out of the way. I really wanted to bail myself <laughs> out with that. It did not work. I just needed to get it out of the way. This game wants going the distance, Duelist. When's it, it end? I'll activate Black Illusion Ritual. Okay, Duelist. We'll tribute this Thunder Dragon for Relinquished. I'll activate Relinquished's effect, targeting Maha Vilo. Act Despair and Black Pendant go to the grave. Black Pendant's effect will activate and deal 500 to you. You could attack if you'd like, Duelist. I'll pass. I'll draw. I'll flip summon my man-eater bug and activate. I'll activate in response. Solemn Judgment. Solemn Judgment's okay, fine. Half. Yeah, okay. I'll set a card and pass. Draw for turn. Enter battle. Battle entered. Relinquish attacks your face now. It's the second You attacked my Blasphere, oh. the newest addition to my deck. <laughs> so when you attack this face down defense position card, it gets equipped to that monster without applying any damage calculation. And that monster is gonna be destroyed during your next standby phase. And you'll take damage equal to the equipped monster's attack. So I'll be taking his boosted attack or his original attack? Equipped magic opponent equal to the equipped monster's attack. It's gonna, it reads kind of it's weird, like, but I think it'll just, you'll be taking 1550 because like it's just what its attack is when it's destroyed. I mean, I think that's how that works. That makes sense, that makes sense. Someone knows they can point it out. <laughs> All right, now that was a horrible battle phase. I'll go to main Now phase remember, two. you're only at 1,475. So I'm next standby phase. Oh! I'm not new here. Okay. <laughs> you got summon with summon skull. I gotta pass that. I draw. All right, time for plan B. I'll activate my Thunder Dragon and add two Thunder Dragons to my hand. Then we'll activate Mystical Space Typhoon. Destroy this face down card. You hit Black Illusion Ritual. Ah, just a bait. Well, all right, let's activate Polymerization. Diffuse my two Thunder Dragons and create the Twin Headed Thunder Dragon. Attack the Summon Skull for 300. Your move, Duelist. Draw for turn. I almost had you at game point with that blast sphere. <laughs> Activate scapegoat. I'm making four sheep tokens. Where are my little sheep? Hold up. <sighs> we got scapegoats, guys, so they're here. They almost fit in a zone each. There's no column based cards in this set, it's fine. I'll pass there. Draw. All right, time to go on the offensive. Activate Monster Reborn. We're going to get the Summon Skull. Summon Skull's gonna attack a sheep token. Bye. And I'll attack this one. Ah. You hear them die, there's blood. <laughs> You're moving, you want to attack them, you hear their, their poor death throes. <laughs> yeah, I do, I want to. Draw! I'll set a monster face down, and I gotta pass. I'll draw. What could this face down be? Summon Skull's gonna attack it and find out. You hit, send you. And I'll attack this sheep token. Your move, duelist. Draw for time. I'll tribute my sheep token for Thunder Dragon and attack your twin headed Thunder Dragon so I can lose. Okay, all right, fair, fair. Yeah, I, that was it, that, that yeah. was it. Having an easy 1800 beater that shows up fairly consistently now is actually really nice. La Jin is an excellent addition to my deck and it's it's gonna stay in here forever. I got two of them, they're always going to be here. I mean, they get swung over, they get outed, but they force Paul to have to do something.
Cloning is a pretty cool card. I've been enjoying at least trying to use it. It kind of underperforms a lot, but one nice part about it is that it's a sort of decent way to answer like high level, or not high level, but high attack monsters like La Jin, or maybe a Jirai Gumo if Alec decides to run that, where I can just match the attack points. Not as good as Copycat, but decent and like forces some interaction. Okay, the audio should sound better, guys. We forgot to plug in our proper mics for uh, game one. You think we know better. Yeah, you think we know better, like seven episodes into this, but you know, sometimes you goof. All right. Game two. That was that was solid. It just, I, some of my cards were at the bottom of my deck and they would not come out of it. You get to pick. I'm coming back, man. I'm going first. Draw. Normal summoning my Sonic Bird. I'm gonna ash its effect. <laughs> now use I its effect. Wish. I'll get Black Illusion Ritual into my hand. Why not dig in the deck some more? I'll pitch Thunder Dragon. Get my two Thunder Dragons. I'll activate Swords of Reeling Light, setting one, and I'll pass. I'll draw. Or I'm gonna start this duel off by pitching my own Thunder Dragon. I'll get two copies for myself. It is how this game is supposed to go. No attacky, huh? No, none of that, so set your little monster. Oh, <laughs> well, maybe I want to. Set. Mm hmm Your move duelist. Draw for turn. Like, you might think that I'm just gonna like wait around and wait for you to find a play. Absolutely not. Normal summon sends you. Ooh, and I use his effect. Okay, I see. It's I'm look, if you think of the worst, because I'm doing it. This is all gas, no logic. <laughs> Relax, duelist. <laughs> I'll activate Graceful Charity. Graceful of you. We're drawing three, and I have to drop two of these ca oh, two cards from my hand to the grave. Scapegoat and Giant Germ. All right, All right. Let's Go activate Black Illusion Ritual. I'm going to tribute my Sonic Bird for Relinquished, and I'm going to use Relinquished's effect to take your face down monster. I won't get any stats from it, but it's mine now. Next, I'll normal summon La Jin. All right. Send you attacks for 1400. La Jin attacks for 1800. I'm gonna main phase two, set one card, pass. Second turn on her swords too. I'll start with Graceful Charity. I'll activate Solomon response, paying half. Oh, you don't want me drawing cards, mm -hmm. huh? I'll set a monster face down and end my turn. Draw for turn. La Jin will attack your face down. You're attacked by a Wall of Illusion. It's got 1850 ah. defense, which means you'll take 50 damage and your La Jin will be returned to your hand. I'll go to main phase two and activate Fisher. Then I'll normal summon La Jin and pass. I draw. I'll activate my upstart Goblin. I draw a card. I'll normal summon Mahavila. We'll equip Mahavila with the Axe of Despair. We'll equip it with the Black Pendant. So that means that it's now going up to 4,050, just like last game. And I'll end my turn, which is the end of Swords Revealing Light. Your move, Duelist. Draw for turn. I went to battle. Relinquish, attack Mahavilo. All right, so that means that we're both gonna take the damage from this. Yes, we will. So I'll take 4,050, and you'll take 4,050. Okay, and then Relinquish loses its equipped card. Yes. The well, way to... Make things a little complicated, huh? It is what it is. Now you could take my Mahavela, but remember, if you do, Duelist, black pendant burns my Black five. Pendant will activate and deal 500 damage to you, so was it really worth it? I'm not sure anymore, to be honest with you. That's tough. But since I put myself in this position, oh my gosh, all, now all roads lead to defeat. I'm, this is this Yeah, it's bad. not pretty. This went bad, so I'm gonna go out in the only way I can, well, no, I can I can live. I can live. I'm going to so I didn't attack with these. Switch them to defensive mode. I'm going to tribute my relinquished and set. Ah, I see the play. <sighs> defensive. Pass. Okay, defensive, defensive. I draw for turn. Well, thankfully, you won't have to think long because I've got a play here. I didn't think I would ever have to do this, but You're I'm gonna, gonna tribute, tribute it. my oh mom my God. <laughs> And it's equip spells yep. for Thunder Dragon. Look at that, what I, look at that, I just, <laughs> <laughs> Which means Black Pendant activates and you'll take 500 damage, <laughs> Duelist. <laughs> 500 <laughs> damage. I messed up so bad. <laughs> Giant Germ is back. I, I didn't love this card because in one of our games, I opened two of them and I was like, oh, okay, this card's horrible. But it does burn for 500 when it goes. And so if all three of them trigger, that's a 1500 burn in a game where we pay half our life points like it's nobody's business, or at least I will. And I want to win the life point battle. That's why this is in here and for deck thing. The newest addition to my deck is Blast Sphere, and this card had Alec almost dead to rights. I love it. If they attack it, it just gets equipped, and the monster's gonna die in the next standby phase, and or their next standby phase, and then like 
that could be game if it's like a strong monster. I'm planning on really using this to just deal with things like Relinquish, but also any, you know, Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon, Summon Skulls, anything that's strong and a threat. And because it's set face down, it's really tough to anticipate. They can't deal with it with like a Fissure or something like that. Yeah, I know, I know what you were uh, thinking. I know it's like Relinquish, just crash in. We both take the damage and then just swipe it. I wasn't swipe thinking it. about Black. So, okay, I had Solemn Judgment set, but I was greedy. I wanted to try, so, yeah, I, I could have hit the Mahavilo. I could have hit the Axe of Despair. But when, when I was like, okay, that attack wasn't enough. If you ha Black Pendant messed me up yeah. because I was like, oh God, if I solemn Black Pendant, that's not gonna that's not gonna really work. And I mean, like, it wouldn't have been the worst idea. It, it, it would it, it would have felt best... bad. And then my next idea was a horrible one, forgetting that I can't. I was like, okay, maybe I'll just Black I'll just solemn the effect of Black Pendant when it goes to. Grave, but yeah, it's only I activation can't, can't of spells, that. not a spell effect. Now, what's interesting though is, well, I mean, really, yeah, I guess you should have just solemn Baha Vilo. Yeah, that that's would my have been normal the, summon. That would have been the you simplest can just thing. Swing with everything. But I, I got really greedy. and I, I've been greedy in this I, series before. And you can be greedy. greedy. Guys, look at me. You can be greedy in Yu Gi Oh!, but you have to be sound on yeah, you, all of your rules and effects. You might reap what you sow, duelist. Ah. Uh, because I, I always know there's more coming. Why should I, I let him resolve like any of his cards man. if I can solemn them? I can always half my life points. So I kind of doubled down a little bit more on my Maha Vilo strategy, and this time I added in extra copies of Black Pendant. So I've now got like a total of three Black Pendants and two Acts of Despairs with my three Maha Vilos, and they actually are showing up a lot. And the scary part about Black Pendant is when it goes to the graveyard, your opponent takes 500 damage. If you're not careful, that can actually win you a game. Good games regardless. I'll certainly <laughs> take this this win. I, I've been, I was a little nervous about it. I'm gonna be completely honest. I don't know what all you've I got. Was, and... I was going for everything. I was like, oh, two Solemns? Good, let's just do it. Let's no, just I go, 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 I go, thought go, you go. also had polymerization. I was gonna I was, be like. I was so is, hoping yeah, I, I like, top deck it here, here. Here, here. Yeah, if you had had Polly, okay, I was gonna be just, Okay, yeah, that wasn't happening. <laughs> but see, if you had Polly, I was really, that was, I was like, okay, he's gonna like Polly and swing. I mean, that's actually why I even tried to summon the Maha Vilo, is I was just like, well, he'll probably use polymerization, and at least this way it can not be swung over by it's the twin headed Thunder Dragon. But, Which makes sense. Thanks for watching episode seven, guys. Retro Rumble. It was fun. You never know how the retro duels will go. Sometimes games go to turn 30, like game one. And then sometimes games end remarkably fast when we take 4,000 plus damage at the same time. Like, comment, sub. Let us know if you'd like us to do a part two of this series with Retro Pack 2. Then go on eBay and check how much it costs. Yeah. And you can answer again. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, that'd be cool. We'll see you guys in the next one. Past, past turn. turn.